Ever since we started using term seeks, progress within the field has been extremely slow. However, um, what's happening in the, in the past few decades, right now, in the coming years, is going to be super detrimental to how you live your life. Growing up, I read these comics about Asterix, the legendary Gaul, and his friend Obelix, and in their fight against the tyrannic Roman occupation. Obelix's job was carving out these giant rocks called minis, and he often used them to crush entire battalions of Romans. In one of these stories, Caesar decides to implement a plot to enable the Gauls into capitalism. And the way he does this is by putting monetary value onto the many rocks. Looking back at 12-year-old Esten, I was in awe about this. I was like, what? Rocks? Currency? How about to earn some money? <laughs> and essentially, this is when my obsession with money systems kicked in. <laughs> so it's not just in the comics where rocks are actually used as payments. In Micronesia, back in the days, they, people called Yak used these giant disks of rock as a form of payment. And this was as late as the 1900s. Throughout the time, a lot of weird payments have been used. Um, for example, in Cambodia today, they use bottle caps as a payment for some services and small goods. In, in ancient Rome, they used salt as a form of payment. And also, in a small area in, in Colombia, after the government put strict border controls around this area, the local community was seen actively using cocaine as, a, as an accepted currency. But what's happening right now is that we're moving more and more into the digital space of things. And this is what's going to change the way your life is. So here I am to present to you the three megatrends that are going to be the most impactful on your life in these coming years. The first one, you're going to start using data to pay for financial services. Back in 2017, an internal memo from the Global Bank Santander was released, and it said that over 10% of their global profits came from international bank transfers. 10% guys, that's a lot. And a lot of this is coming from hidden fees. I believe this is about to change, because data is becoming more and more valuable. In fact, data is just taking over for oil, as the world's most valuable asset. This is not something the big tech companies are going to overlook. So the way we've worked with data to create offers and advertisements for customers is largely based on metrics that are, um, that are focused on a big group of people rather than tailored to one person. So it's often market studies, focus groups, and samples that are being used. So by giving the tech companies access to your purchase history, we're able to reduce the sample size to just one. This means that the merchants are now able to target their customers a lot more precisely and offer better offers to their customers. This is very valuable. And the tech companies, they know exactly this. And they know how to crunch this data, unlike, unlike a lot of the incumbent banks. A lot of you might think that the big banks are too big to fail or too big to to let their market go away. They have too much of a critical mass. They, their brand recognition is so strong. But what we're seeing is that this is actually already starting to happen. In the UK alone, over 3,000 banking retail branches has closed down since 2015. That's over a third of the total banking branches in the UK. And it doesn't look like this is about to slow down. As this space progress, more and more tech companies are going to move into, into it. And they're going to offer everything that the banks do in an updated, disruptive, and pack it all up in a beautiful package. The question is, are you guys going to trust these tech companies with your data? I believe, for most people, the answer is yes. Because a lot of people just don't care. Generally, people know how big the, the, these tech companies are. And they know that we have a lot to lose by misusing our data. So gradually, we're going to see a lot of people move over to these companies for their services. What they'll do is offer the same services with a greater ease of use, and they're going to be integrated into your, your smartphone, your social networks, 
and most of all, it's going to be entirely free. One thing that's particularly interesting, and perhaps for you guys, and what is known as truly captured the market yet, is in uh, point of sale location. Nobody has really found a way to effectively capture the data from point of sale locations yet. And the ones who are able to do this first, they're gonna be sitting on an absolute gold mine. I know there's a lot of business students in this room, so there's a hot tip for all of you right there. Next mega trend is artificial intelligence. And up until quite recently, this, um, this sounded like something taken straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's actually all around us right now. Just think words of information, online shopping suggestions, spam filters, and even the robot answering you when you ask your phone a question. Google recently even launched a bot that could call a hair salon, and the person picking up on the other end were able to give the, the bot an appointment without even noticing that they were talking to robots. A lot of you might have heard of the robot Sophia. She was the first robot to become a natural citizen of, uh, of a country as uh, when Saudi Arabia gave her citizenship. And she was highly hyped in the media, uh, something very impressive with artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, we are still quite far away from where a machine can exhibit actual intelligence behavior similar to that of a human. But we are slowly moving into that direction. In terms of applying AI to payments, one very interesting application that I also mentioned earlier is point of sale, right? And in China, we see, for example, chatbots already being implemented in a lot online, for example, through the, chat, uh, the app WeChat. Here in the Western world, Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant uh, is probably going to revolutionize the market as they're becoming more and more intelligent and of higher quality. The potential for how this is going to impact us moving forward is it's incredible, guys. For example, why should you have to pay the same price for a drink for us here? By collecting data points on the two of you, we're able to determine almost exactly what you're willing to pay for a certain drink and what you're willing to pay for a certain drink. So if you walk into the same store at the same time in the future, you might see different prices personalized to you. And this is not just online, guys. This is in retail stores as well. Next one. I'm gonna say a big buzzword now, cryptocurrencies. It's a little scary word that always brings a dead silence to the room. It's been really heavily hyped in the media, and I'm sure all of you know somebody that lost a lot of money by investing in crypto. <laughs> While many people are skeptical to the long-term uh, potential of Bitcoin and similar systems, I am a true believer in the system that is behind it. I am sure that this is gonna be detrimental for our future. And that's blockchain or distributed ledger technology. This technology is really changing our money system in a similar way to how the internet changed the sharing of information. In a traditional system, there's one authority validating transactions and generating trust. But on the blockchain, the group that's a collective validates the transactions and updates it almost immediate, immediately across the network. This, this technology allows any two parties to interact without a trusted third party. This, was, this system has incredible potential to speed up transaction times, improve transparency, and also reduce costs. And best of all, it's almost unhackable. Paul Brody, who's a global blockchain leader in EY, he claimed that by 2030, more than half of all new business transactions will be done on the blockchain. What I believe, where you can get the most value on the blockchain, where we're gonna see the true potential in the future, is when you combine it with something called smart contracts. So smart contracts are pieces of code that codifies and automates the logic behind business. So what it does is facilitating three functions. It stores rules, it validates rules, and it self-executes rules. So let's compare this and, and put this in the con context of the kiosk, because the kiosk is also determined by rules in a way, right? So I'm coming to the kiosk to buy a soda, and you're the cashier. If I give you 
you give me so that. Quite simple. And this system usually works, but it's also quite easy to trick the system. If I give you $2, you put the money in your pocket and you say, you can give me $2. This brings up a huge hassle for me when I'm trying to make a transaction happen. So I want you to imagine the smart contract is kind of like a foolproof kiosk, right? As long as both of us are engaging in the uh, transaction together, we can be sure that the transaction is gonna happen because it's all automated. And since it's on the blockchain, there's no need for an inter intermediary like a broker, an organization, a government in order to execute the transaction. Let's take a case from, uh, from real life. Imagine shipping coal around the world in a boat. You'd imagine this would be helped by a lot of digital systems. And yes, it is. But a huge part of it is still done in the old school way, through paper. To determine the ownership of the cargo on the boat, you have a piece of paper called the bill of lading. And the person that holds this piece of paper has the right to the cargo. So even if you, even if you have paid for the goods on board the boat, somebody else can decide over these goods as long as they're holding that piece of paper. They have the right to your cargo. Of course, there are routines to solve these trades today, but the point is, it's highly impractical. So by implementing the bill of lading onto the smart contract on the blockchain, tracking the ownership can be easily and securely verified for everyone to see, and the transfer of funds can be fast, easy, and secure. While some of you may still be amazed when people are paying from the store with their smartphone, the payment industry continues to evolve rapidly, and we can certainly say that we're far beyond the time of paying with minor rocks when we purchase an item from items. If I went back and talked to 12 year old Espen, he'd be pretty disappointed that he's not going to get rich from selling rocks to people. But groundbreaking digital technologies will bring unimaginable advances to the industry over the next few years, even far beyond what I talked about. So it's up to you to brace yourself for impact and embrace the changes that are coming.